Ladies and gentlemen, welcome aboard Radio Aviation Excellence, the Wright Flyers Sky Bridge. This is your captain, Randy Wright speaking, and again, I want to take this opportunity to personally thank you for tuning in to this brief message. Well, ladies and gentlemen, just earlier today, I put up that video clip, that Sky Bridge clip, about Donald Trump essentially going to the Twitter sphere this morning in order to lambast Kentucky Senator Rand Paul for refusing to go along with his attempt to bully people into accepting the Lindsey Graham rhino approach to the so-called repeal and replace movement in regards to that disastrous debacle and fiasco of a bill known as the so-called Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act, or as it's more commonly referred to, Obamacare. One of the things that I really kind of appreciated here with respect to what Senator Paul said in response to the 45th president of the United States of America is that he will not be bullied. I mean, Trump actually wrote in his first tweet was that that, uh, you know, Rand Paul or whoever votes against the H-Care bill will forever, and then in parentheses, future political campaigns, be known as the Republican who saved Obamacare. That was tweeted this morning by Donald. Yet, here are the responses that Senator Paul gave to Trump right after this was done. He said, no one is more opposed to Obamacare than I am, and I voted multiple times for repeal. The current bill isn't repeal. You see, ladies and gentlemen, that's the very problem that we've been encountering with respect to this current Republican administration time and again to the point of it reaching ad nauseum. They are trying to pull a fast one on us. They think that we are too stupid or too short-sighted to see through the subterfuge that they are attempting to throw out there. You know, all of the rah-rah, shish pom-pom waving that we have seen with respect to Donald Trump does get tiresome when Trump continually supports rhinos, like he has with DACA, like he has with this idea of a $1 trillion infrastructure spending package to be accomplished in 10 years. You see, ladies and gentlemen, that actually dwarfs the out-of-control and rabid radical spending that occurred under the two terms of that disastrous Barack Hussein Obama regime. These are things we can't ignore, but they continue to come up to the surface. Senator Paul went on to say, I won't vote for Obamacare light that keeps 90% of the taxes and spendings just so some people can claim credit for something that didn't happen. That was a direct swipe at President Trump. Trump has been known to be a bloviator like that. He's been known to attack people without restraint as, you know, any time and every time they go against him. This is one of the things that I've always been troubled with in regards to Trump, because he demands loyalty, but with respect to him, it's always a one-way street. A one-way street in which what is really happening gets ignored. And essentially, what he is doing is he is attempting to browbeat people, to force them to accept his line of view, irrespective of whether that is beneficial for the country or not. And again, one of the things that that clearly demonstrates is that Trump doesn't understand that when it comes to the state senators, well, you know, the senators and congressmen and women, from the various states, that it's the people who are their boss, not he who is their boss. Yes, Trump is the chief executive officer of these United States of America, but that does not mean, and it never shall mean, that he is the boss of the country. The reason I say this is it is stated in no uncertain terms, in the damn near poetic language of our preamble to our shared United States Constitution that we, the people, 
are the true ultimate wielders of popular sovereignty in these United States of America. That's what I wish Trump would do. I wish Trump would recognize that. I wish Trump would respect that. But again, all of the concerns that my first officer, Jeremy Grapenton, and I have had throughout the course of the previous two years are coming to fruition. It is not being challenged. Trump is not being challenged, except for this one point. And we know that Paul is going to take a lot of heat for this. We know that the loudest surrogates and acolytes for the 45th president of the United States will lambast him and say that he's not working with them and that he is obstructing them and that he is quote unquote saving Obamacare. Again, that is such an intellectually disingenuous line. It's one that is very upsetting in so much as it is nothing short of a bald faced lie. Unfortunately, the way things are going right now, it's not going to make a bit of difference to those forces that believe that they can get some sort of political pay out of this. And that's certainly what Trump is doing, and that is why in his second tweet that Rand Paul took the tone and the stance that he did. And he went on to say, Calling a bill that keeps most of Obamacare repeal doesn't make it true. That's what the swamp does. I won't be bridled, or bribed rather, or bullied. These are all succinct responses on the part of the Kentucky Senator. And while I don't usually always agree with him, there are points of his that just seem a bit too much like his father, I think he's dead on with respect to this. Why is it that the commander-in-chief is attempting to browbeat members of his own party when it is his own party that he is siding with and the factions within the gutless opposition party, or GOP, that is attempting to break every promise they made throughout the course of the past four successive election cycles? These are things we have to wonder. These are things that are going to have to be addressed if we are ever truly going to place this nation squarely back onto the path to prosperity. I fully realize that this is far easier said than done, but done it must be. And if there is any people that can stand up to him and challenge him and ensure that our nation is placed back squarely onto the path to prosperity, it is the American people. It is because we, in our capacity as United States citizens, are the true ultimate wielders of popular sovereignty in this once thriving and flourishing representative republic of ours. But we have got to be ready, willing, and able to hold our elected officials and leaders accountable for their words, deeds, and actions, just as we would for each other, ourselves, and anyone else. That's what it means to be self-accountable. And that's what it means to be self-reliable. And when we are both, then we are self-determinate. And that is the common, or you know, the constant strain that we always have to recognize and adhere to in the heart of the land of the free and the home of the brave. Because the moment that we start to break away from that and ignore that, that is the moment that we begin to allow the agent provocateurs of tyranny and despotism to weave their web of deception in this our beloved constitutionally endowed federalist representative republic. You see, ladies and gentlemen, what we must do is stand together shoulder to shoulder in solidarity and unity and support those senators and congressmen and women who are actually taking the steps to stand against something that is a lackluster bill. We didn't vote these people to go into Capitol Hill just to throw away our fundamental and inalienable God-given rights so that politicians could pat themselves on the back because they feel good about doing something when, in fact, the best thing they could do is the very thing that they are now saying they can't do. That is unacceptable. It's something we will not tolerate. It's something that will not 
be allowed to go unchecked or unchallenged. That is why we must foster that fluent and working knowledge and understanding of our shared United States Constitution and thereby our fundamental and inalienable God-given rights.